Hi everyone, uh, today we have a guest from Sydney, uh, Matthew. Uh, Matthew, nice to meet you. Great to be here. Okay, so Matthew, my uh, first question uh, a little bit about your childhood and uh, how you became to entrepreneur. Uh, was it your dream when uh, you was a childhood uh, or how it happened? Uh, yeah, so I grew up in an entrepreneurial family. So my father and now my brother run a big uh, business. Um, you know, uh, they do archery, so bows and arrows. You know, so you pull, you pull a bow and arrow. Uh, they run the biggest company in the world doing this. So I grew up in that environment. So I guess it's in my blood and it's in my upbringing. So there was never another choice. Okay. That's it. Okay, got it. And uh, why did you decide to go to SaaS here? Uh, how did you choose this industry? Um, I didn't choose SaaS. I, I'm actually an industrial designer, so I make products uh, by trade. But I moved to Australia 10 years ago and I ended up falling into SaaS, I guess. Uh, not much product design is done in Australia. And the SaaS industry here was just starting. Australia is quite behind. So Australia is behind, you know, Europe, behind the States. Uh, but here it was just starting and happy accident. I ended up falling into it, failed a couple of times, and then finally started to make it work. Uh, when you start your business, uh, what, is, what are problems uh, where you have? Um, everything. <laughs> Like, you, don't, you don't know anything. Uh, like the, fir the, first, the first company we started failed. Um, we raised some money. We went after a problem. We couldn't get activation. Uh, it was in B2C. Um, I much prefer B2B now. Um, I think you have to go through that. Um, and then since then, look, we learn every day. Uh, it's funny, you look at it now, and you think if we started tomorrow, it would be so much easier because we know how to do everything. But at the same point, everyone goes to the same same problem. I think I think one of the hardest things is data. So properly tracking uh, what is effective and what is not effective, uh, especially when it comes to product development. So when you build new products or you change products or you change pricing or you change marketing, measuring what has a positive impact and what has a negative impact, uh, extremely hard to do as your product gets bigger and bigger and the team gets bigger as well. Uh, you mentioned that uh, first company uh, what you have created uh, was failed. Uh, maybe you can say me just one, the main one reason why this company is failed. I think we we had a idea that was very attractive, but when it came down to it, it wasn't an urgent need. So it was a cool idea, people liked it, but it wasn't urgent and therefore people weren't actually engaging with the product quick enough. Yeah, it's hard to say, good to have but not must have. Exactly, yeah. Nice to have, not a must have. Yeah. Fail. <laughs> okay. You mentioned that, uh, what, uh, what do you think, uh, what is the main uh, steps uh, when you start a SaaS business? The main steps when you start a new business? Yeah, I think, um, first of all, find a, find a genuine problem. Um, I think if you can work in your industry, so think about where you have expertise, that's a great place to start. So everyone has, has a great idea for a dating app, but honestly, if you haven't been in that industry, then you're going up against people who have lots of experience. Um, if your expertise is dog walking, then you know go and build a dog walking app. Um, if your expertise is B2B sales, then, then do something in that area. So I think, think about what it is you're really good at because it'll give you a competitive edge rather than picking something random. And then you understand the problem a lot better. You understand where the money is. You understand who the customers are likely to be and you'll build something a lot faster. Um, do that, build an MVP. So build a minimum viable product. If you can sell it without any code, then that's great. Um, and then I guess next step is to, uh, decide whether you can go on revenue for the first six months or whether you need to raise a little bit of capital at that point. Okay. 
and uh, what do you think, uh, what are SaaS trends will be in the next year, in 2020? SaaS trends. Um, well, it depends industry or models. I'm seeing, I mean, maybe I'll talk about models because I think it's more interesting than the industry. In general, not the yeah, um, I think I think you're seeing more SaaS companies who are starting to add to put services on top of SaaS. So what you'll see is a lot of SaaS um, companies have actually hit have actually hit a limit to, the, to their growth on SaaS, and so they're starting to add paid for services. So you know we always said do SaaS not services. Now it's actually going the other way, where SaaS companies are hitting ceilings and they're going well. We're going to charge ten grand for this corporate service on top because that's where we can get the next big step of re- re- revenue growth. Um, obviously you see this in companies like HubSpot, you know, where if you, if you sign up for HubSpot, you have to pay X thousand dollars just to get started. Um, it's actually an extremely good business model. And I see more and more companies now picking it up where they're charging setup fees and they're charging expansion fees. And they're basically getting much better at extracting value from the end client, especially larger customers. Um, so again, it's not so much an industry thing, it's more of a model piece, uh, but I think SaaS companies are looking beyond just pure SaaS as, as the revenue model. Uh, are you related to AI trends? Artificial AI trends. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it, it, it's yeah, like AI is a balance. So, about it, but uh, from my experience, I you just uh, I saw just few startups really do AI, but because mostly just talk. Yeah, yeah, like like, like a lot of AI is just it's just a nice word. It's just a, a word. Um, I, I think maybe maybe forget the AI word and think about like like just intelligence or just a- adding adding value to business processes. Um, I mean, in our industry, we see everyone's coming in with chatbots, etc. And it's interesting. I mean, that's that's essentially AI. But interestingly, then where we have a process where we're saying you need to put like face to face time in, it bucks that trend, and that's why it works. So I think there's a balance. It's like anything. People go go to one extreme or the other. You know, co- companies try and automate everything, and then and then they need to work out what they should automate, and what, what they shouldn't automate. Because if they automate everything, then they lose, then they lose the brand, they lose the human touch, and um, it, it affects retention and everything else. Um, AI, everything has intelligence now. Like you're not building anything that doesn't, that doesn't have intelligence. You're not like you're measuring data for everything. Like you have to to compete. Um, but I wouldn't just jump on AI as a trend word. I'd work out again exactly what intelligence you're. Providing. And if you're inside from venture capitalists, uh, if you add AI to your startup slogan, it's fast money even to raise it money. Yeah, or Bitcoin, Bitcoin innovation, AI. AI. Yeah. IoT. Right, exactly, yeah. Like, they're just words. Like, ha- don't worry about You have to sell venture capital if you have to sell venture capital, but first of all, like, sell your customers. You know, yeah. that's what really matters. And uh, my last question, uh, can you share a few words uh, to young entrepreneurs who just start their business, uh, what they should do, what they shouldn't do, something like this? Um, look, I think probably one of the things that defines success is tenacity. So with a new entrepreneur, uh, you have to keep going day in day out and if something doesn't work you change it and you try again and if it doesn't work you change it and you try again and you try again you try again and you try again if you try something 10 times one of those times it's going to work um so i think with anyone new in business do not expect everything to work on day one do not expect to make millions and sell your company in three years time it's probably a 10-year process in reality um the average age a founder exits a company is 44, I think, years old. It's not 23. So make sure you're serious. Um, be prepared to fail a lot. Be prepared to do 10 years at it. I think that's a good mindset to get yourself in before you start going ahead. And if you have that in mind, then you won't, um, you know, you won't step back at your first failure. You'll just keep going. Okay. So, thank you. Uh, thanks for sharing your insights. Uh, thanks for the style.